And we are here with Eric Dill. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> we were having a little joke um, backstage about, I was telling him, giving him some idea about the questions I was going to ask him. And, and literally I was saying, well, you know, and then blah, blah, blah. I'm going to say blah, blah, blah. And then you're going to say uh, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm sure everyone out there blah, blah, blah. can totally understand what we're talking about. <laughs> I hoped everyone watching enjoyed uh, that first performance. Simply amazing. Thank you. I love the setup. Oh, thank you. Guys you guys have a good setup here. It's really nice. It's really thank nice. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Why did you go solo? I'm curious. Why did I go solo? That's a Other good question. Other than sheer desire to be well, fabulous. Well, the thing is... The Click Five experience was uh, was something new to me. You know, I hadn't like I had I've done music since uh, forever. I can remember. I've always liked music, and then when I was twelve, I jumped into it with a guitar and I started singing. You know, and playing along and doing you know Green Day and Nirvana and Smashing Pumpkins and stuff. Remember, we were talking about hands too. We did a lot of off well, that, off we camera did a lot talking. Of and, talking. And, off camera. <laughs> so here's the hand thing. Um, so anyway, when, when, it, when it got down to it and I found myself, let's just say, uh, front and center of, of that experience, I felt like it wasn't really right for me. Um, and, and, and there were a lot of reasons for that. Me and the guys were very different, you right. know. Um, I, I guess in summation, we were just, we were different enough to where we had done what we came to do. And, and, it, and it happened, I mean, it always it happened things happen fast. fast but, but it I can attest, I can, you're right, I can felt attest. Like it happened fast. I did happen fast. Um, we pretty much made a record and went on the Ashley Simpson tour in 2005, her US tour. And she was like really hot at that time. And like the MTV show was, was, was just like right. popping off and like it was a real big deal. And, and so we went on, we went on a tour with her. Um, and uh, it was great because you had her and then you had these. You know, five guys in suits who were playing, and it was a very nice balance. So that was a good experience. But the problem and the chart, the album, just and went you know, up and, and we were like the biggest debuting rock band, and we sold you know so many units our, our first week, which was unheard of, you know, and all that. So we were excited, and it was a great, it was a great ride, and it was a ride. It was fast and all that, and um, so I'm proud of you guys for that. It was good. We did good work. Um, but then you see, I need to write. I need to express myself. And when it came time for the second record, uh, it wasn't happening. They didn't really, you know, because of differences, whatever. It wasn't really. They didn't want me to write, and I thought, well, this isn't gonna fly. So well, I left, writer, and they. So that's well, I kind of yeah, and I mean, I, I am. I'm um, unfortunately, I'm an artist, and I have to express myself. And so I couldn't do that role anymore. So so I left, and I started writing music, and. Um, um, it just so happened that a song that I wrote ended up getting used by Chris Daughtry. It was his. Can I tell you, like, no surprise, that song gives me chills. Does it? There's something awesome. about that song that, I mean, it maybe, and I think, I personally think that great songs have a very universal appeal to them, and they touch something universal in everybody. But that particular, lyrically and just the music is such a, and it was a huge hit for Daughtry. Yeah. But that song is just beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Is that, that that was a cool that song was a cool experience the way that came together. How uh, did how did it come together? I'm curious. I was uh, mean started like this. It's no surprise <laughs> I won't be here tomorrow. Oh. And it started like that, and then Chad Kroger from Nickelback heard it and he liked it. So we went up to Vancouver and worked on it for a week. And I was on Atlantic Records at the time, and I was gonna I was gonna do a record with Chad, and that never happened because Chad was kind of bouncing around trying to figure out who he wanted to work with as far as major labels, and Atlantic didn't end up being it, so I didn't end up working with him. Anyway, Chris Daughtry heard the song. Interesting, because Chad's voice would be... You know what kills me? Perfect for that song. You know what kills me? He showed Chris that song with him singing. Chris didn't even know that I sung the song. And I, all I want to do is hear Chad's version. I want to hear Chad sing yeah, No Surprise. Yeah, I do too, right? Like, <laughs> so, but, so, but, so we wrote it, and then and, and Chris, uh, they were like, we like it, we want to change some of the verses. We're like, okay, go for it, go ahead. And then you have the No Surprise iteration that you hear on the record. So, And it was awesome, and Chris did a great job with it. He's a great singer. Because it needs that, like, and, it, and, and, mm -hmm. and Daughtry and, and Chad have that same kind of... Totally. Vocal totally. Vibe. Yeah. I don't know how to explain yeah. it. Yeah, it's uh, it's like it's like someone's gonna kill me when I say this, but Chad does have a little soulful in his thing, yeah, and no, Chris does. does as well. And uh, and I and, and I and when I wrote the song, I thought to myself, they would be 
both those yeah. artists would be cool for that. And it was just, it just happened so that, that, that that's what happened with wow. it. Wow. So, um, huge hit, huge yeah. hit. Yeah, so that was fun. And then um, I, just, I needed, okay, so, so here I am living in LA, in Hollywood, and I, and I needed to make a record. That's kind of the, the point. Because you're an artist. Exactly, and it took a long time, but now it's done. It didn't take a long time to do, it took a long time to figure out how I was gonna do it and who I was gonna work with. In terms of? Either going into your label or which mm -hmm. musicians or everything. Well, it it became uh, it became a matter of who can I find that cares about production as much as I care about my songs. Hmm. And I found no, not easy. I, no, it's not. It's really hard. And I, you know, I've 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 met a lot of people, and um, um, I happened to meet uh, Matt Radosevich, uh, who's a producer who worked on my record, and we worked over at. Um, Barefoot Studios. Right, right uh, studio. Yep, on, on Vine in, uh, in Santa Monica, and that's Eric Valentine's studio, who actually, Eric mastered the record, which is great. Eric Valentine, gosh, he does, he's done a lot of great stuff. Wow, yeah. Uh, he did a lot of the, the big uh, 90s uh, Smash Mouth stuff. Um, a lot of the rock stuff. Yeah. Who's the other one? Third Eye Blind, gosh. That wow. Was good. He did the, was... you know, Semi Charmed Life record. Which is a great album. Sounds awesome. Yeah. You know, and so I, I and that's the other thing too, I had to, I had to find people that I trusted with it. With your baby, because exactly. really your baby. Exactly, and, and, and you know, I knew whatever I did, I'd have forever. Better do it right. Right. So, there we go. So did you, did you choose to do, you've releasing the, you released the EP independently. Yes. Are you gonna stay independent? You know, that's a good question. Th you know, this industry uh, is, it, uh, it moves in a strange way. Uh, it never moves how you think it will. And should somebody want to, to take my record and, and put it literally at that next level, and I mean uh, promotion and so it's on. It's just promotion the, marketing. Because it is. And I say that it respectfully. Is. It, it is, but, but they do a good job. You know, yeah. they, labels do a good job of that and everything, if they're doing it right. And like, the Click 5 got, did it. They did a good, uh, Lava did a good job with the Click 5. But that, but an Lava example. was in a totally different place then, and the music business was in a totally it different was. place and then. It was, and you know, it brings me to another interesting thing, is that I got did in. Did Jason Flom sign you? Jason Flom signed us. And 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 if, and if and if universe. and if Jason yeah. wants to sign me again, <laughs> we can talk about that. That would be interesting. Um, I've got a hold of him a couple times, yeah, and Jason, Jason hasn't got back to Jason's me. Jason, a, Jason, Jason's an old friend. <laughs> I see you, Jason. But I, I like Jason. That was that was cool, and he did lots of good stuff for us on Lava. And then, like you're saying, the story was is that he left Lava, and uh, and so we got absorbed into Atlantic. And then when that happened, things were kind of a little different for right. for the Click Five. When is the full length coming out? It's gonna come out, it's done, it's gonna come out this year. Not at the end of the year, but this year. Okay. Because I'm just kind of playing it by ear. Um, oh, I have a second video coming up. We're gonna take it uh, to radio, most likely college radio first. Good. And um, the song is called War With The Wolves. And, and we're gonna play War With The Wolves. Yay! We're gonna play War With The Wolves. Yay. Um, it's one of my favorites on the record. Um, and uh, we made a video for it, and it's a kind of a different video. The Wherever You Are video is very... Uh, beautiful, it's beautiful. Thank you. I want to call it a little safe. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in just a realistic way. Right. Uh, War With The Wolves is a little more out there. It's just, uh, it's, just it's, it's, it's wild. It's fun, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's great. And so, I, I hope it's great, <laughs> actually. Actually, I haven't seen it. So here I am, shooting off what I have been. The filming, what, what, they, what was filmed was cool, you know. But, uh, so, so that'll be out. I'm thinking around like, maybe, maybe June 15th-ish. Right. Kind of release War of the Wolves. Um, and then we'll wait a little while and probably just, probably just drop the record, yeah. Not too long. After, uh, not too long after that. Well, please promise to keep me informed because you are now part of the Weekly Comet family. Awesome. So we will let Thank everyone you. know about the video and the record, and we'd love to have you back on the show. But now, I don't know, man. I think you got a song you got to play for us. Got to do it. <laughs> War with the wolves. Yay. Thank you very much. Wow! Thank you. What a great show. I want to say thank you to Liza, and to Eric, and to Jason Kramer for being back with us. And of course, next week, everyone tune in for John Anderson, who is the ringmaster extraordinaire. You will laugh your butts off. And of course, Dust Tapes, who are gonna put on a pretty badass dance party for us. But now, I think, Eric, are you ready? Ready. Excellent, back over to Eric Dill. You do it alone at night Don't you know 
Comet. Good night.